as this big rat's nest of a Digimode interface, a sound card, a whole bunch of cables going to the radio and the computer. The easiest way of getting your older radio onto doing Digimodes. No, it turns out it's not actually. Uh, and I knew that. You guys probably knew that. But we'll figure out an easier solution that probably is new to many of you guys. But uh, we'll discuss that as well. So hang on and I'll show you what replaces this big rat's nest in just a little while. Hi, and welcome to LB Zero Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morton, LB Zero Fox India. And instead of that big bundle of wires and a huge box that you saw that has been my previous SB2000 Digimode interface for my ICOM 706, I got something new. And this is not only in part, but fully thanks to you, my viewers, who actually watches my videos, support me on Patreon, and support me as YouTube members, that actually now has gotten to a point where I can buy stuff and test and play with and make videos on, and hopefully help you guys make better ham radio equipment decisions. And what I got is in this little case here, and I'm just going to open it up here, and we'll see what I got. Because instead of that huge box, we got this little thing, which is a digirig. And in addition to this little digirig, which is both a cat control interface and a sound card, we'll need a USB-C cable to interface to the computer. And we'll need some radio specific cables. In my case, these two cables here which is for the ICOM 706, which one is for CIV, which controls the cat control, and the other one is for the audio. And that's how simple it can be. You don't need a separate sound card. You don't need a separate cat control box with all the bells and whistle. You need the digirig, or at least I think you do. And that's why I'm here today. I'm at a part of the uh, NO2 542 NO2542 the Ostfall Coastal Trail. I'm in the middle of town. I'm close to the railroad. You've seen me activate here several times. So it's a tough POTUS spot. Besides that, it's an it's a boring spring day, which is kind of gray, wet, and not fun at all. But besides that, being down here in the middle of town by the railroad, by a couple of campers in front of me here, I have a lot of noise. So this will will be the perfect conditions to test the digirig and see if I can get a digimode activation of this park. And just to make it a little bit more tricky, band conditions are a missile today. I did a little bit of testing at home. Not much, not much at all to be heard. So uh, this is going to be fun. Just let me set up my computer and uh, we'll take a look at the computer screen. It's always hard to point a camera. I think it's going to be down here or somewhere. And we'll take a look at the setup and uh, we'll do a Digimode POTA and uh, see if I can get the park activated using the Digirig. Setup wise, I'm running a Lenovo X230, um, ThinkPad X230 uh, laptop here. It's not new, it's not fast, but it's rugged and perfect for portable use. From there, I have one USB cable going into the digirig over here to the 706 with two cables going into that and a 20 meter hamstick on top of the car. And that's actually it though. I'm not going to do anything else. That's my setup. So let's take a look at um, my computer settings though and uh, start calling and see if we can get some uh, QSOs in the log on this really great and boring spring day here. So. I got the computer set up here. And the first thing we're gonna do though, I'm just gonna move myself. So um, I got room for the computer picture down here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the settings on the computer. First of all, I'm gonna check that the speaker of the computer is actually the speaker of the computer. We want the computer sounds not to go into the radio. That's my first step. Secondly here, we're gonna go into the device manager and my 
Windows is in Norwegian, but trust me, the setup is the same no matter what kind of language you're running. It's just that I prefer to have Windows in my own language here. So we're going to go to the port setting here. And we can see that there's a Silicon Labs CP210 USB to UART bridge. That's COM port number 7. And we're going to take a look at the audio controllers as well. And you can see here that I got a speaker and a microphone, which is a USB audio device. And those two are my Digirig sound card ports. Let's check JTDX and check the settings there. And surprisingly enough, I've already tested this, so it's going to be set up. But I'm going to show you where to set stuff up, though. So let's go into File and Settings. And if you're using WJ WSJTX, it's pretty much the same settings there. So first of all, on the Radio tab, as you can see, I'm using an ICOM 706 Mark II G. It's port, serial port COM7 baud rate of 19,002 and if you get a different radio this won't be correct for you but if you get a 706 this will be your settings data bits 8 stop it's 2 handshake default ptt met method is rts over com port 7 uh, mode can be anything you want i'll just press it at none so it uses the radios mode and split operation reg let's do a test cat here just to see that it works that turns green and I can hear the relay clicking in the radio when I press the test PTT button. As for audio, it's the uh, USB audio device as both microphone and speaker. So we're all set to go. So let's go ahead and start calling and see if we can get a QSO or two. I'm not going to show you the entire activation because watching someone else do FD8 is like watching paint dry. But I'm going to show you a QSO or two so you can just see what happens. And then we'll draw some conclusions afterwards. And there we go. We got the computer up and running with uh, FD4 on 20 meters. Um, I've spotted myself. I'm lugging this straight in Polo, and I've made a video or two on Polo before. It's a new portable logger, and that's just because that spits out a log that's already made for Poda and for uploading to the uh, Poda website. So let's start. Find a free frequency here and start calling. We got a free frequency. Press the enable transmit button, and let's see what happens. radio starts and uh, this is pretty much a waiting game so I'm gonna edit this out make it shorter for you but let's see what happens I'm gonna show you let's say two QSOs and we're oh straight away EU1 EU from Belarus EU1 EU let's get that already to log and it's also logged in the uh, in the G JTDX log, but I prefer I prefer by far to have it actually logged in Polo. It just makes me have all my Poda logs in the same space. There we go, Omen 3 C and D. And the good thing about doing FD4 for these kind of activations is that it's almost as fast as doing uh, SSB during an activation. I'm going to say almost as fast because it really depends on the other party actually getting back to you. Let's see if you can hear me now. We got a couple of more, so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do M0 TTQ Stewart. Let's get back to him instead. And Stewart's been a supporter of this channel for 
for a good while actually. Um, he's a nice guy, he does a lot of portable and stewards and the log. So I'm going to finish up the activation and we'll be right back for you guys doing a conclusion on this. So that wasn't half bad. Got 18 QTOs and about 23 minutes. And that's per perfectly within what I expect though on a day like this. Um, all around Europe uh, and well all around continental Europe to be exact and then one Iceland no DX didn't expect any DX day with the band conditions being what they are and I'm satisfied this is easy it's an easy solution it does not require as my previous solution is does not require a separate sound card two USB cables into the computer a plethora of cables going from the interface into the radio and generally just a big mess which is too much of a hassle doing portable this is one USB cable from the computer to the digirig and then two cables from the from the digirig to the computer and that's it that's how easy it is i like this little thing i'm going to do a little bit more testing on it and i'm going to do a video showing you how i set it up for civ for icom radios because it does not come set up for icom radios and civ so i'm going to show you how that's done in a later video and as i said you guys my viewers are the ones that made me buy a digirig and for about 50% of my viewers, all my North American viewers, you might think that a digirig is not expensive. But there is no digirig distribution in Norway. So I needed to buy this on Amazon. I could have ordered it straight from digirig, but I bought it on Amazon because since you guys have been nice enough to click my affiliate links, I had a couple of Amazon gift cards that I could use to bring the price down. But for me, when buying stuff like this from Amazon or anywhere overseas, there's a 25% sales tax that is added to the uh, I, to the price of the item itself. In addition to larger shipping costs and you guys in North America would have on the products. So a lot of the equipment is way more expensive here than it is at other places in the world. And that's just something I got to live with. But then again, having a YouTube channel, having you guys as my viewers, as my members, as my supporters helping me out makes me test this equipment, makes me be able to test it and try it out for you. And as I said in my last video about the bag where I keep my hamsticks, this is a product I bought because you should buy it too. Or at least if you can't afford it, it's an easy way of getting digi modes on an older radio and it works with pretty much any radio at all so enough of my rambling if you want to take a closer look at the digirig i'll leave a couple of links below one is an affiliate amazon link for the digirig and the other one is to the digirig website i don't really care where you buy it if you buy it from amazon i get a tiny little bit of a cut on it it's not any more expensive for you guys but i get a little bit of a cut on it which helps me again to buy stuff like this nonetheless thank you guys for watching that's it for now you know the drill like comment subscribe do whatever you want but most of all view my videos thank you guys i'll see you down the bands and i'll see you in my next video 7 3 all